Hey everybody, and welcome to Ask Alley, your place for life advice with a metaphysical twist. Ask Alley is the longest running spiritual podcast on iTunes, now Apple Podcasts. I've been helping others there since 2005. Today is Monday, November 28th, 2022. I want to thank you for tuning in and giving me a listen to. If you'd like to get a reading or find out more about me, just visit com. And don't forget, if you like this episode, please give it a five-star rating, review it, and share it with three friends. We are still on Season 17, Episode 37, but we are slowing down. I think we only have one left, and then we'll be into Season 18. 18! 18 years! Are you kidding me? Wow, that kind of just blows my mind that I've been doing this that long. (laughs) Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're in the States. I personally um, ate so much that I was pregnant with a food baby. Um, Very uncomfortable for a little bit of time. And then, well, then I felt better. Uh, And if you didn't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had a nice Thursday. And if it was tough for you, I hope you landed gently. Uh, Don't forget, the Black Friday specials um, are still up on Facebook. We have the half-off readings, and that's all my readings, including um, all the phone readings that people love. So, 15, 30, and 60 minutes. Um, We have the VIP days. I've got one of those left. And we have the magical intention boxes, kind of like a spell box where um, there are items inside and you put it together to cast yourself a little spell for New Year's Eve. All those things are on my Facebook page at Allie Thies Friends. Again, they're good to purchase until Monday night, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. All right? All right. And in case you're new to this podcast... Um, Welcome. I want to let you know that I do not uh, edit this podcast, and I have 15 cats and two dogs, so something usually happens. Not always, but something. And they all had their nummies, and they're um, winding down, taking their little cat naps. So let's hope they sleep all through this program. Nope, no such luck. Gibbs, Lucky, be good. So, the magical item this week. It is an herb, and it's Urbana. Hopefully I said that right. Y-E-R-B-A, mate, M-A-T-E. The gender is masculine. The planet it represents is Venus, the element of fire. And it helps with fidelity, love, and lust. You want to wear it to a... You want to wear it to attract the opposite sex. The infusion that is a fine lust potion, and if drunk with a loved one, will ensure that you stay together. To break off the relationship, spill some of it onto the ground. Now, I know that um, this is served as a tea, and I know many people who drink this tea. So you don't have to use, you know, the herb just plainly. Um, You can put it in some tea. It is bitter. I have had it before. It is bitter, so you might want to sweeten it with some honey, maybe a little bit of milk um, to make it easier to digest. If you want to see the picture and the card of this magical item of the week, it will be in this episode's post on atabodyecstasy.com. I do not know what's going on with these cats. They are, they've got the zoom zooms going on. That's what's happening. God help me. All right. So the Oracle Card Overview of the Week for November 28th, 2022. I am using the Shaman's Dream Oracle by Alberto Fadillo and Colette Baron reed You can see a picture of the cards I'm about to draw on this episode's post on outofbodyxc.com. All right. Oh, and with the um, with the boxes, the spell boxes, you get free admission into uh, my VIP group, the Connection Cafe, soon to be called Mystical Minds. All right. So let's choose three cards here and see what happens. 
Now, I really need to have a a Facebook Live and show show you guys all the stones I have and uh, let you purchase them for the holidays or for the new year. I got a lot of them, and I'm going to move. So I don't really want to move all of them with me. They're very heavy, some of them. The Adgate bookends, which are just gorgeous, are extremely heavy. So let's see what else I got in here. Let's see. That's number one. Two. Sorry, Big Cat. Number three. I'm encroaching in on his space. Mr. Ross. I... Well, I'm sorry. You're kind of like right there. Oh, you're, now you're taking up my space, mister. And he doesn't care. So let's see what cards we have. All right. Hmm. And this last one. You know, all three of these go together, and I swear I can't make this crap up. Okay, so the first card we have for Monday and Tuesday, we have First Breath, The Beginner's Mind. And this is telling us, ooh, is there something that catches your fancy? A new topic? A new area of curiosity? If so, Monday and Tuesday is the perfect time with that beginner's mind to hop in and start learning. My favorite thing when I'm trying to learn something new, I listen to a podcast, I'll watch videos on YouTube. Um, before that happened, I would uh, read. I'd read books, I would read blog posts, I did a lot of reading. So that is one way to get information for your beginner's mind. Then the second card I drew, which is for Wednesday and Thursday, is Stranger. And that's all about curiosity. So with the beginner's mind and you're jumping in on something new, you're going to get even more curious to know more. You're going to be taking some deep dives and just soaking in all the information. Your brain, your energy is going to be going, yes, I love this stuff. All right, that's Wednesday and Thursday. And then again, I can't make this up. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have whale song, which is resonating. So the things that you were curious about, the things that you took a deep dive, a lot of it resonates with you. And you're going to take that stuff that resonates with you and you're going to run with it and you're going to practice it and you're going to learn more and you're going to find other people who uh, like the same stuff you're investigating or researching. So this is an fa absolutely fantastic week to take a deep dive in on something new, something you've wanted to explore and haven't as of yet. Okay, so again, Monday and Tuesday, we have First Breath, The Beginner's Mind. Wednesday and Thursday, we have Stranger, so Curiosity. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have Whale Song, which is resonating. Yay! And again, to see the picture of these three cards, they will be on this episode's post on outofbodyecstasy.com. Now, the topic this week is three ways winter sol solstice energy works for you. And I want to do this um, before we actually hit the month of December in case you want to buy some supplies or, or you know, get something to, to help you with these three things I'm about to mention. Now, the first one that Solstice Energy really is fantastic for in the winter is going within, reflection, reflecting back not only on the year 2022, but where you've been going the last several years. You know, where are you going? Is, is where you're at now, is this what you wanted? Now, we have to remember where we're at right now, each and every one of us, we made choices to show up here. Okay, we may have forgotten some of those choices that got us here, but we made choices. All right. So when you're diving in and you're reflecting, you're going to reflect back on those choices. Now, obviously, you cannot go back and, you know, turn back time and make a different choice. But if you look back, you do that deep dive and reflect, which is what the winter solstice energy helps you do very easily then you know what different decisions you'll make in the future if faced with approximately the same thing. 
okay, if you're not where you want to be, okay, if you're not where you want to be, this is where number two comes in. Planning for 2023. Winter solstice energy is fantastic for letting you plan, okay? Now, the going within, the reflection, the planning for 2023, you might want to buy yourself a journal or maybe a planner, a calendar to map out what you want to do and give yourself deadlines. You know, if you're mapping out 2023, if you do not give yourself a firm deadline with something, then whatever you're putting in, there's just a wish. It's not a goal. It's just wishing if you don't have a deadline. It's like I would love to finish um, Social Connections book, but do I have it in my calendar anywhere? Nope. So it is a wish. I've been wanting to move for years. Well, <laughs> I have to be out by the end of March. There is a deadline. It is now definitely a goal. It is no longer a wish. It is a have to because I had and I need to move. I have a deadline. So when you're planning for 2023, allow yourself to put in deadlines. You can write it down on your calendar. I like to put deadlines in my phone so that it goes off. I make it go off. Dang, is it a month and then a week and then like 24 hours? So that it warns me, hey, hello, have you been doing this? And usually I'm not going to lie. It's like, uh, no, I forgot about it. So then I get busy on it because I, I created that deadline because I had a goal, right? So one is going within, you want to reflect on the past year and what's been going on. And then you want to plan for 2023. Number three, with all this energy that's around, it is absolutely fabulous time to contact guides, angels, the deceased, um, your soul, your higher self, twin flames, soulmates, soul connections, uh, anyone you want to contact. This is a fabulous time to do so on the solstice. Now, what I like to do, especially only on the solstice and either two days before or two days after, because that energy carries, I like to, I, I like to grab a candle and some oil and a stone. And for you guys, I would say an orange candle because it is attracting ginger oil because it spices stuff up and makes things go, go, go. And then a Faden quartz because Faden is for connection. And what you would do is you would take the orange candle and you would dress it with the ginger oil. Now, when I say dressing, you put a little bit on your index finger, take the candle and go around from the middle up or around nine times and then put some more on your finger and then go the middle down nine times around the candle. Okay. Never go up and down on a candle in the same motion. That just, when it comes to magic, you don't want to do it because it, it, it screws up the energy. Okay. So up nine times, down nine times. All right. You want to place the orange candle. If you have a candle holder, put it in. If I don't have a candle holder, I usually melt the bottom part of the candle and stick it on a plate. And then take the Faden Quartz, which is um, spectacular for connection, for telepathic connection, astral connection, dreams, dream connection um, with somebody. Take it and put it next to the candle. Sit there in silence for just maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And concentrate on whom you wish to connect with. Who is it that is important to you to connect with and have a conversation? Okay? And then let the candle burn down in a safe place. Do not ever leave the candle burning. If you cannot leave it in a safe place and let it burn down, at least let it burn for nine minutes. And then you don't want to blow the candle out. You want to snuff the candle either by, you know, licking your fingers and pinching the, um, the wick so it stops. Or if you have a snuffer, it's called candle snuffer, put the candle snuffer on it and snuff out the flame. When you blow on it, you scatter the energies, which drives me insane. You know, when, when we're blowing out our candles on our birthday cake, I mean, it is spell. 
we are setting our intention. We are putting words out there, what we want. And then we blow on it and it scatters the energy instead of focuses it. But it is what it is, right? Um, when the candle is either burnt down for nine minutes at least, um, at a time, you want to make sure the candle is completely burnt down. And when that happens, you want to take the fame quartz and you can, if you want to put it in a little pouch, that's up to you, wrap it in some cloth, tie it with a string, <laughs> and you can carry the fame quartz with you um, on your person for telepathic connection during the day. Um, you can have it on you, next to you, if you want to try to astral connect. And you can also put it under your pillow or next to you on your nightstand um, for lucid dreaming and connecting then. Now, what's important is when you're doing the connecting, that you write it down. And I've, I've said this many times in the past, you believe you're going to remember everything. You are not going to remember everything. It, it doesn't matter how much you think, how vivid it is, you're not going to remember. I mean, I've had so many vivid dreams with Bill and Ted over the years. I didn't write them down because I'm like, how can I forget this? Oh, I've forgotten them. <laughs> I remember glimpses, little bits here and there, but nothing what I would have remembered had I written the damn dreams down. So write down any type of communication you get. Little, and it doesn't have to be a you know like conversing back and forth. The communication can be you asking a question and then you being shown something. That's the answer. Okay, write it down. All right. So the three ways the winter solstice energy works for you. Number one, going within reflection. I suggest a journal. Number two, planning for 2023. I suggest a planner or a calendar. And number three, fantastic time to connect with guides, angels, the deceased, soulmates, twin flames, the whole enchilada. And believe it or not, here we are at the end. I want to thank you for joining me here for Ask Allie. If you like this episode, please rate it and tell your friends. The more people who listen, equal the more people I can help have their aha moments. Join me on Facebook. I'm not going to be on Twitter anymore. So Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And if no one's told you today, you are fabulous. Take care and have an exceptional week.